Hello, I'm Reverend Neely Hicks, and it's great to be with you today. I'm facilitating today's session for Connecting Faith and Justice, and today's session is focused on law and righteousness, how the two differ, and how to find and speak from your most faithful voice. I want to begin with announcements. Um, Wednesday night meditation is something that's really special. It's Wednesday nights from 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m., just 30 minutes, and that's central time. And um, we meet on Zoom, not in person yet. We're going to pick up again on March 10th, and we've got a new sign-up form. So if you've not signed up for the month of March, please do, and know that it will run four weeks beginning March 10th. Um, through the end of March. We are still celebrating the large grant that was given to help the village open and hope that you will just celebrate that with us and watch for upcoming announcements on how that's being used. Um, today is Pastor Ingrid's celebration birthday. Her real birthday is February 29th. Last year was a leap year, and so she had an actual day set apart to celebrate her life. I think God created a special day just for Ingrid to be born. <laughs> so, um, but this year she will celebrate her birthday today on February 28th. Please share your love with her. Share your love with anyone who is celebrating life today, a new beginning, a new a birthday, a new birth year. Let us all not take for granted the gift of life in ourselves and one another. We've got some prayer concerns. Um, we all are keeping watch over Carmen, um, and she um, is still in the hospital. Please keep her in prayer. Pray for all of those who are visiting her, the love and the energy that they bring into her space, that it will be good and healing and that God will do a great miracle of work in Carmen as she's so loved by all of us. Please pray for Joyce Gatlin, who continues to recover from a stroke and from um, different physical issues. Please pray for Joyce. Her sense of humor is alive and kicking as that is of her family, and we just treasure them all. So send them your love. We pray for Nathaniel, who was in the hospital this last week, thankfully was not in for long, and we ask that you continue holding Nathaniel in prayer. Let us pray for all of those who are suffering from storms of life or storms from nature. We know that in Texas, they've had an especially hard time with the snow, and then as Pat um, shared this morning, they are having other storms um, with hail and such. Let us also remember those who rejoice this day. Let us multiply their joys so that the whole world will one day sing with joy. I invite you wherever you are now to just settle in and feel grounded, um, Feel free from distraction. Close your eyes and let me guide you through this prayer as we speak to our beloved creator. Oh God, speak. We need you to hear your voice in the wilderness, your words to bubble up within us as a brook refreshes. Refine our language. Let words of hope spring forth, instilling images of what can be if we are only willing. Give us courage that those words may come out boldly in every which way possible. Let us not rest in what we can do, O oh God. But let us rest only in what you can do. Let it be, O oh Lord, let it be. And now we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to read from the book of Romans in the New Testament. I'm going to share my screen here so that you can see the, the scriptures in front of you. Um, today's um, reading from the New Testament comes from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. As it is written, I've made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, he gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. And when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distress made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, that very first verse that I read, for the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That's the one I want us to really think about today. Throughout history, we have seen those in power oppress others to get there. If they already have power, to get more of it. Those in power write laws. People follow them to stay out of trouble. And before long, society becomes numb as to what's really right and just. We just do, like this is our human predicament. What if your pain is unrelenting and you're one of the oppressed suffering under the law? What if you awakened enough from cultural slumber to see others who are suffering. The United Methodist social principles speak to this, and I'm going to share this with you. Um, you, can, you can actually get the social principles online if you're interested. I will try to share that link too. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so, Civil, civil obedience and civil disobedience. There's a section within the United Methodist Book of Discipline, social principles on this. Governments and law should be servants of God and of human beings. Citizens have a duty to abide by laws duly adopted by orderly and just process of government. But governments, no less than individuals, are subject to the judgment of God. Therefore, we recognize the right of individuals to dissent when acting under the constraint of conscience and after having exhausted all legal recourse to resist or disobey laws that they deem to be unjust 
or that are discriminately enforced. Even then, respect for law should be shown by refraining from violence and by being willing to accept the cost of disobedience. We do not encourage or condone any form of violent protest as a legitimate exercise of free speech or civil disobedience. We offer our prayers for those in rightful authority who serve the public and we support their efforts to afford justice and equal opportunity for all people. We assert the duty of churches, the duty of churches to support those who suffer because of their stands of conscience represented by nonviolent beliefs or acts. We urge governments to ensure civil rights as defined by the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights to persons in legal jeopardy because of these nonviolent acts. So this again is the from the Book of Discipline of the United Methodist Church. And um, so this is what we as United Methodists believe is the proper way to enact our faith in a land of laws. Our faith family has always relied upon the ability to speak out. Moses, Queen Esther, Nathan, but you don't have to be a Moses to make a difference. Your voice matters. When you speak up for one person, you speak up for the world because we are all one. Remember that as we listen to this verse, as you listen and I read to this verse from the book of Isaiah, I'll put that on my screen too. Um, and because we are in the season of Lent, some of you are fasting. So this is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 6 through 11. The kind of fasting I want, and this is God saying this, this is in God's voice. The kind of fasting I want is this. Remove the chains of oppression and the yoke of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Share your food with the hungry and open your homes to the homeless poor. Give clothes to those who have nothing to wear and do not refuse to help your own relatives. Then my favor will shine on you like the morning sun and your wounds will be quickly healed. I will always be with you to save you. My presence will protect you on every side. When you pray, I will answer you. When you call to me, I will respond. If you put an end to oppression, to every gesture of contempt and to every evil word, if you give food to the hungry and satisfy those who are in need, then the darkness around you will turn to the brightness of noon. And I will always guide you and satisfy you with good things. I will keep you strong and well. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water, like a spring of water that never goes dry. Friends, I want to leave you with this song by Mandisa. And I hope that this week that you will carry this message out with you, that you will be a voice that should be heard in society. I pray that you will you will speak up where others are failing to speak. And that when you do so, that it comes from the depth of God's life within you. God bless you.
hold your tongue time to keep your head down there's a time but it's not now sometimes you gotta go Thank you.